Well, hello there. I'm Koltti and I'm a miniature artist. This time I've made a video tutorial or a walkthrough on how I painted the Mimir statue. Uh, this statue was sculpted by Hannes Rodin and is based on the art of Johan Egerkrans. When painting Mimir, I relied on cheap acrylic paints, which are surprisingly fun to work with. <coughs> they are not of high quality, especially since their coverage is quite insignificant. Perhaps this is precisely why they don't dry very quickly, so you can work with them a bit like oil paints. Let's start painting from the base of the statue. I mixed black, uh, green and white to get the right shade. And started to slap the paint on the figure. You don't need to be precise when painting base colors of such a large figure. For this purpose, a synthetic fiber brush is quite good, as they withstand a little bit more intense handling. Cheap brushes from your local market do work well. Next, it's the turn of the figure's head, for which I used a slightly more turquoise tone. The purpose of this stage was to cover the entire figure with paint and find the direction for the lights and shadows. As you can see, the paint coverage is quite weak. This doesn't really matter at this stage. Sponge is good for blending layers of paint and bringing an irregular texture to the surface. I added a little more shadow to the figure's head with the darker tone of the stone stand. Finally, pure white for the hair and beard. You know, the sponge can also be used for painting. You just take paint from the palette onto the sponge and then dab it on the figure with the spawn. Well, time for the next step. At this point, I tinted the head a little greener. The paint should be fairly translucent and watery, so that the lower layer of the paint can be seen through a little.
When this layer was done, I tinted the head even more green. I added a touch of yellow to the paint and started glazing the figure. The purpose was to make the figure look as similar as possible to Johan's artwork. I added white to the mixture and tinted the hair and beard with the mixture. Next, I made highlights on the face with adding yellow and white to the green that was used in the glazing face. When painting the hair and beard, I tried to simulate the structure of the hair with a brush. And as you can see, I dappled and rubbed the wet paint around with the sponge again. I smoothed out the areas of facial wrinkles with medium green, so that their depths would not be so dark. Then I applied a little more yellowish green in the middle of the face to make it more eye-catching. When the figure was dry, I removed the shine of the cheap paints with a matte varnish. AK's ultra matte varnish is unbeatable. As you can see, the tones are starting to match. It's the hair and beard that still did a lot of work. Next, it was time to work a little more precisely with the face. I mixed yellow, white and bone colors and started highlighting the details. At this point, I also switched to using slightly higher quality paints. Give the eyes a bit more shade, a darkness eye area with a black wash.
first paint the teeth with bone color, highlighted with white and finally washed with brown wash. I also did the same process for the skulls at the base of the stand. Painting the details is time consuming, but perhaps one of the funniest stages of face painting. I often tend to spend way too much time on painting the face. But in the end, I think it's well worth the effort. I picked out the hair and beard with pure white and gave them a little highlight. Sometimes the paint is too thick. Uh, in this case I used my finger and swiped the excess paint to spread it out. Time to paint some details on the beard and hair. I highlighted uh, individual beard hairs with white using a fine brush. To make the skin more vibrant, I decided to dab a little yellowish green around the face. Uh, this shade nicely brought more color to the green shade. practice. To get to the finish line, you had to work on highlights and shadows until you are satisfied with the results.
I also decided to add a little brighter dark green to the shadow areas to bring vibrancy to the shadows. Contrast Orc Flash works well for this purpose. Next I move to the working on the beard and hair. I added highlights to the beard and painted short individual hairs on the chin and hairline. Okay, the head is starting to look pretty good. And the next thing to do was to paint the pattern on Mimir's forehead. I decided to copy the pattern from the Mimir picture drawn by Johan. I used a precise brush and a very controllable paint for freehand painting. To paint larger patterns, I used auxiliary lines and dots to outline the size of the pattern and to help draw the lines. When painting freehands and other tasks that require precision, you should try to support your hand with uh, your little finger. This helps you to stabilize your painting posture and keep your hands steady while painting. You should also try to paint in such a way that you always draw the brush towards you. Uh, this helps you to control the movement of the brush. Okay, so there's the pattern now. Ready and finished. Finally, it was time to paint the figure's stone base. For starters, I used the sponge uh, to give the base some texture. You may also find the dry brushing technique quite useful for this task. I added bone white to the mix and started working on the details with the brush. After the painting phase was done, it was time to add a little life to the stone base. 
At first I used green pigment to bring down to the grooves of the stone. I spread the pigment with water, at the same time binding it in place. Finally, I applied PVA glue to the places where I thought the undergrowth would have tended to grow. After that, uh, I sprinkled flock and fine turf on top of the glue. At the very end, I added some dead leaves to the stand. They help to emphasize the scale of the figure, uh, which is otherwise quite close to 28 mm. So, that's it. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you got something out of it. Perhaps the main lesson of the video is that even with cheap ass paints you can get something done. If nothing else, at least you can do the base work with them. Finally, many thanks to my patrons. You guys are great. Thank you. Until next time. Bye.